Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to tell you another strange and unusual story of the unexplainable which lies behind the veil. Down through the ages, man has continually struggled to pierce the veil behind which lies the unbelievable. Many things which were completely beyond our comprehension as recently as a hundred years ago are readily understood today. Maybe not then assume that happenings for which we have no explanation now will in time be understood by those who follow after us. Our story tonight is again based on an actual account from this dark world which lies beyond our knowledge. Edward Page, like almost everybody else in New York, was not concerned with anything more profound than the ever-present, oppressive summer heat. Good evening, Mrs. Pauling. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Page. Oh, it's awful hot, ain't it? It's humidity, Mrs. Foley. That's what's bothering you, the humidity. Maybe, but this heat ain't doing me much good either. Probably gone to put on soup for his supper again. Always hot soup. Oh, and weather like this, too. Oh, don't do that. It's murder. I saw a man kill a woman. Where? Apartment across the way, third floor back on the corner. I gotta get the police. Murder? Police? Sure that's the right apartment? I'm positive, Lieutenant. It's empty. The woman, she isn't here. Maybe it's the wrong apartment, huh? No, it's the right one. There's my room right opposite this window. Look around you, Paige. There's nobody, no sign of a crime. I don't care. It happened. I know I saw it, but... I don't know what happened to the furniture. Please, Sergeant, I know I saw it. The, the woman was blonde. She was brushing her hair. It was very pretty. She fell right over there. The, the killer was hiding right there. He wore shiny black leather gloves, and he had this flashlight, and he came up behind her, and... I know what you're thinking. You don't want to believe me, but I'm not lying. I know I saw it. Oh, you saw it. But now we got to figure out what happened. Let's go over to your room. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. While you're doing all this, the killer's getting away. I can describe him for you exactly. With a description, you could catch him. You charge him with what? Murder and robbery. He robbed a purse and he took the jewelry out of the box. It was right there. Uh, her purse was on the couch. Let's go back to your place, huh? We'll leave the lights on in here so we're sure we get the right apartment. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's the one. See where you left the light on? That's where I saw the woman. She had on a pale blue dressing gown. Please, Lieutenant Davis, say you believe me. Say that I really saw what I saw. Mr. Page, it's been a hot day. Now, you were tired, what, with just coming home from work and all? You heard what the janitor at the department house said. No blonde. And nobody in that apartment for the past month, it's for rent. I saw it. You didn't eat your dinner. Lots of times I get lightheaded when I'm real hungry. Now, why don't you be a good fellow and sit down and finish your dinner and you'll forget all about it. You'll feel better. We better get back. What about a report? Do we make one up? Yeah, I suppose we'll have to. Just say that uh, it's been a hot day. Blame it on the heat. It's not the heat. I saw it. If you won't believe me, I'll find someone who will. Calm down, Mr. Page. What's going on here? What are you doing to Mr. Page? Tell him, Mrs. Foley. Tell him that I saw the murder, that I really saw it. But I didn't see it. Let me go. I got to tell someone about the murder. Find someone who'll believe me. You better come along with us, Mr. Page. We'll talk it over. I beg your pardon. I'm trying to find the apartment that's for rent. Uh, 345 48th Street. Oh, it's in the next block, honey. Right, right back of this building. Thanks so much. Next block, she wants an apartment. Now tell me the whole story, right from the beginning, everything that you can remember. I'll record it. All right, sir. I came uh, not so close to the microphone, just as though you were talking to me. Yes, sir. Well, I, I came home with, with my groceries. Soup. I always have soup. I, li I, I like soup. And Mrs. Foley was... That's my landlady. She was sitting on the front steps. She looked awful. She always does. Well, she complained of the heat. And then I, uh, I ran out of the room to get the police. That's all? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Page, you have an amazing eye for detail and the most retentive memory. Doctor, when it's murder, you see, you remember. You keep on using the word murder. Now, how do you know the woman was dead? She was hit on the head, that's true, but she might only have been unconscious. She must have been dead. He hit her hard. It was a flashlight. Doctor, when can I get out of here? I'll send you home as soon as possible. What sort of work do you do? Well, I'm just a shipping clerk. But they count on me. I keep track of things. Mr. Wonder, he's my boss, says I have a fine memory, like you said. You can go back to your room now, Mr. Page. And you won't need any more sedation. Send Lieutenant Davis and Sergeant Fenton in. Morning, Doctor. Morning. Lieutenant, Sergeant. Page come out of it yet? I'm afraid Page isn't going to come out of it as you call it. Well, that's too bad. He's a nice little guy. Nothing for him to come out of. He's as sane as you and I. Wait a minute, Doc. Suppose you speak for yourself. There's no form of dementia that I've ever seen or studied. I'm convinced that Page saw something, something real. I've been around a long time, Doc. Some guys sit around looking in other people's windows. Well, they see quite a bit, but most of it isn't murder. Page didn't seem like that kind of man. He was worried and scared by what he saw. I don't think he's that kind of man either. Page is an oddball. He doesn't add up. Everything says he's honest, but he tells us a story we can't believe. We'll keep him here a little longer. I'll run some tests on him. I've never seen a case like this before. That's your worry, Doctor. Ours is over. We go on the facts and there aren't any in this case. Doctor, what am I...
am I going to do? Try to forget it. Go home. Go back to your job. I guess that's the only thing to do. If you can't tell me what I saw, how can I figure it out? Well, the day was homicide. All right. Now, what's the address? Would you mind repeating that address, please? What's the apartment number? And we're on our way. What's the matter, Lieutenant? That murder that Page told us about just happened. Dr. Mason, please. Blue dressing gown. She's brushing your hair. It's real pretty, too. Fell right there. Well, Dr. Mason, this is Sergeant Fenton. Lieutenant Davis would like to know when Page was released. Oh, I see. He was released over three hours ago. I want him picked up fast. Two African masks over the fireplace. Sergeant Fenton. Hang up. I'll call you right back. Just came in and turned on the light. Go over there and get him. Tell him nothing but bring him back here. Lieutenant. Hey, Doc. Hot night. Miserable weather. Good looking, woman. Usual blunt instrument. How about a flashlight? Hmm. Ever hear of a murderer describing his crime to the police before he commits it? Sure thing. It's a killer, a big man. Dare you to catch me kind of thing. I wish this were that simple. 
The only trouble is he described the furniture in here ahead of time. There was no way he could have seen it. You sound like you need some salt tablets. This heat's murder. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. I'll send the boys up. Just like I told you. That's right, Paige. Just like you told us. Everything's the way I saw it. You left the hospital three hours ago. Did you come right straight here? I walked for quite a while. I just got home. I don't mean that. I met here, this apartment. Why would I come here? Well, nobody but believed you when you told us the story about the murder. It's upset you, made you mad. You decided you're going to show us. Came home, you saw the apartment was rented, so you came over here and you killed her. No, no, I didn't come over here. Paige, why don't you make things easy for everybody? We both know you can't see a killing, and then suddenly three days later it happens. But it did. I described the killer for you. And the killer is you. Quit stalling. Why don't you admit what you did? Tell us what you did with the flashlight and the gloves you used. Lieutenant Davis, these bills, they're for this furniture from three different stores. Sergeant, let's stick to what we're doing. There's no other answer. Paige, you killed her. But Paige described this furniture before the woman even bought it. And she was in Chicago three days ago. She's never been in New York before in her life. How could Paige have described her? I'm willing to admit I can't explain how he could describe the furniture or the woman. But I do know how he had a chance to come over here and kill her. But I didn't, Lieutenant. I didn't kill her. If we don't all keep calm around here, I'm the one that's going to wind up in Bellevue. Let's face it, Paige. You could have prevented all this. If you guarded the apartment, you might have saved her life. Nevertheless, you're still my number one suspect. I saw the killer. That means you can find him. I gave you a description. I know I have. But it's not enough. Let's get out of here. Sergeant, nothing so far. It's a tough job looking through all those pictures, Mr. Page. You get so they all look alike. Stay with it. It's a pretty good description you got of him, Doc. Better than I could do. Very few witnesses have the power of observation that Mr. Page has. I'll say that for him. He saw plenty. It's still not enough. How about the way the crime was committed, the nature of it? Oh, it's pretty standard. Look for an open door, rap on the head, take the valuables. The dime a dozen. It's the smart ones we nail. The ones that figure out their own clever way to commit a crime. Well, if that's all the help you can give us, I guess it'll have to do. Let's see how they're doing in there. That might be. The face might be the same. I don't know. The nose isn't the same up there. At the bridge, the killer's nose was flatter. That's Ben Burton. He's out of circulation. He's got five years to serve before parole. I don't think it's any use. Of course it's some use. A woman's been murdered here. Let's start all over again. Now, gentlemen, gentlemen, please relax. Now, there's a very good idea. Let's all have a cup of coffee and perhaps it'll we'll clear our thinking. Now, Mr. Page, you've been most cooperative, but if we could help you to remember just one more thing. All right, Doctor. When you saw him hit her, what did you do? I hollered. I hollered, no, don't, don't do that. Did he hear you? Well, no, he couldn't hear me because the window was closed and his ear... Wait a minute. His ear, his left ear, it was, um, uh, uh, oh, what, what do you call it? Prize fighters have them. Cauliflower ear? That's it, his left ear, he had one. That does it, that's what I need, something to work on. Come on, Fenton, we'll get out the new description on it. This time we'll add a cauliflower left ear. Well, Mr. Page, I think you can go home now. I'd rather not. I couldn't sleep now. Not until the job's finished. I need to talk to that man. It 
may be some time before the police can find him. I'll wait a while. It'll be easier. You see, Dr. Mason, you want to know what this is about because you're a psychiatrist. I have to know just to be able to live with myself. <laughs> Like I said, cop, I don't know what you're talking about. Either book me or turn me loose. You won't hang it on me with a witness. You need more than that and you know it. You'll need the stuff that was stolen and maybe even the weapon the guy used. Yeah, you're right. I need all of that. And you're going to tell me where it is. Okay, okay, so stop talking and show me. Bring on your witness. Let's see what you've got. Don't go away. Don't worry. I can't wait to see how this turns out. That's him. That's the man. That's him. That's the man. Sit down, Kerwin. See? See the ear? Tell him. Tell him, Paige. Tell him what he did. He knows. But he doesn't believe I saw him, is that it? That's it, Dan. I think you're a liar looking for a big charge or something. You wore shiny black leather gloves, dark gray pants, and a dark blue shirt. No hat. You hid behind the chair when the woman came into the room. She was blonde and very pretty. She wore a blue dressing gown, light blue. You had a flashlight in your hand. You hit her and she fell. The hairbrush fell too. You turned and took the jewelry out of the jewelry box, stuffed it in your pocket, went over to the couch, emptied her purse, and you left. It's a frame-up. Nobody see me do anything. You're trying to scare me. This guy's a fake. He brought him in just to work on me. The arm. When he put his left arm around her neck, she bit him. That's why he rubbed his arm. Maybe the bite mark's still there. Pull up the sleeve, honey. It's there. I know. You didn't mean to kill her. She caught me in the room. I couldn't get out. I... Take him away, Fenton. Try to forget it, huh, Paige? Go back to work and stop thinking about it. Are you going to stop thinking about it, Lieutenant? No, I guess not. Edward Page returned to work two days later, but he was not, nor would he ever be, the same man who left work such a short time before. Page's experience was an example of what is defined as precognition. The ability to foresee the future. Throughout history, there have been many such instances, reported and documented. How does it happen? Why? I'm afraid the explanation is still beyond our understanding, at least for the moment. 
please join me again for another journey into that real but unexplainable world which lies behind the veil. Good night. Thank you.